So I have been a little bit frustrated creatively recently and I've been looking at ways to maybe break through that. Uh, one way I was thinking about maybe buying another lens um, and I really want a 50 millimeter again because my favorite lens I had on my EF mount camera was a 50 millimeter. Unfortunately, that's about $3,000, so that's not gonna happen right now. So, instead of that, I've been looking at different ways. Now, a couple of photographers I really like, they're like the best portrait photographers that I follow, they all use this. This is the Canon FD vintage lens. It was made in the 70s, and it is a really amazing lens. Anyway, so I was watching some guys that shoot and some gals that shoot with it. I was like, man, I want to get some of those vintage lenses. That'd be awesome. And then ding, in my head, I was like, wait, I have like three lenses for my old film cameras. I was like, I wonder if those are FD lenses. So I run over to my uh, little old little thing of old camera gear, <laughs> old basket, it is, I looked in it, and I found three FD lenses. I was like, sweet, how do I get these on my camera, my RF mount camera? Turns out, all you need is this little guy, an adapter that goes, goes from FD mount here, goes like that, so it just goes in your lens and I keep it on this lens, and then this goes right onto my R5. And this is 50 bucks. This is the, this is the brand Earth. They make a bunch of filters and stuff and they had the FD to RF mount and they have lots of other ones. This all together, this 50 millimeter, cost me about probably 150 bucks. And I'm gonna show you why you need one too. <laughs> So one reason that I've been kind of frustrated with my creativity a little bit and the reason I kind of went down this rabbit hole was I've kind of noticed that my photography hasn't been as good, at least in my opinion, um, as it used to be. And I, one of the main reasons that I definitely know why is because I now have a 28 to 70 zoom lens and I was shooting all my stuff on a 50 mil pretty much all the time. Like I, I don't think I took many photos unless it was a landscape and it wasn't on that 50 mil. And I think prime lenses, I think prime lenses are better in a lot of ways actually but in the main way that matters most to me is it forces you to be more creative. You can't just sit in the same spot and zoom in and out. You actually have to move around your scene. I think that forces you to be more creative and to actually get different types of shots. So I've been craving that a little bit. So I was like, man, I'll just do this and see if this works. Now, these lenses force you to be creative in a whole new way because they're 100% manual, right? Because the aperture control is all manual and the focus is all manual. So you don't have have the luxuries of just being able to lock onto someone's eye and focus that way. You actually have to take the time, use your different focus peaking modes to be able to properly focus your image and it's tough. I did two shoots already with it, but it's tough to get things in focus and I think that's that's good and bad in a way. Good because it really makes you slow down your process and you can't just fire off. Bad because I wouldn't use this on anything paid probably. Unless I got really good with it, but right now I'm not very good with it. But I think because of those limitations, it just forces you to be more creative. Like you don't, you almost don't have to think about it. You just are more creative because of these things that hold you back almost, but are freeing in a way. It's a really weird thing. And I'm just rambling because I, it's just so much fun to use them really. I think one of the reasons I love this lens and the other two that I have, I have a 200 mil and a 24 mil, the slight imperfections, it is so shocking how good these lenses are compared to these new modern lenses, but they all have something different. For example, the 50 millimeter has kind of like this natural glow to it, not too much, like it's very subtle in certain scenarios, but it's almost like you have like a pro mist filter on it and it's super beautiful. And my other 24 millimeter lens, or maybe it's a little wider, but anyway, it's a wide angle lens. It's got like this dent in the uh, the outer rims, like someone that dropped it, because I got it for free. And it is like, they just have character and they render color so well. And the overall lesson you get is these lenses are fun to use. And I think they just really make you be way more creative. Now, another reason these lenses are incredible is because they're so cheap. You could literally get like three lenses with a camera, a film camera that is, for like $200. 
200 bucks and then you spend $50 on this ring and then you have like so many new things to like create with and it's so much fun. Like there are collectible lenses that are way more expensive. Um, for example, the Helios lens is a little bit more on the expensive side, but like these FD lenses, this is only the F850 and it is like so cheap. I think the most expensive one I saw was $150 alone by itself. But I think that's because vintage lenses are starting to become more of a thing now for, uh, for us digital creators. Okay, so some time has passed and it is now freezing cold outside with snow. So we're gonna do this inside. But I think everyone should actually just get a vintage lens. It's really inexpensive, like I said before, and you're getting good quality glass. That is really fun to use. And you could possibly get a lens you want. Like for me, I want a 50 millimeter focal length. Get a vintage lens, it's fun. It is different than like a high end 50 mil, but I think it does the job for now. And like I said before, I've been having quite a bit of fun with it. And I think you should get a vintage lens too. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for the um, adapter that I got, but do your research. One thing that I found with doing my research for um, adapters, if you have a mirrorless camera, this has nothing to do with you, but if you have a DSLR, you have to do a little research because depending on how thick the adapter ring is, and depending on how far that pushes the lens away from your sensor, apparently that can affect your um, focus distance at infinity. That can change. So make sure you do your research depending on what you're getting. If you have a DSLR, if you have a mirrorless, it doesn't matter. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this one was kind of fun to make and like I always like playing with new toys. Um, but if you liked it, please subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any vintage lenses that you think I should try or that you enjoy using. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.